Okay guys, I wanted to talk for a little bit about carry inside of the vehicle. And basically what this video is geared toward is uh, pretty much getting to the most perfect scenario for you of where would be the most comfortable and easiest way to carry a firearm that you can have access to it. Now, laws differ from state to state, but there are several states, like the one I'm in, that have castle doctrine that extends to your vehicle, just like the castle doctrine you have in your home. It just extends to your vehicle. So basically, if somebody tries to carjack you, uh, you have the same you have the same capability to use the force that you would if someone were breaking into your home. So we're finding that a lot in a lot of states that they are making these uh, laws extend to the vehicle, which I feel 100% that's the way it should be. You shouldn't have to worry when you're in your vehicle. And uh, things do happen out there. Bad things do happen. And you shouldn't have to worry about getting sued or uh, all kinds of unnecessary prosecution that these laws would help to protect you from if you used your firearm on somebody that was in the course of a carjacking. Which I would almost, which I would say pretty much off the bat, if somebody's carjacking you, uh, if you're in that car, then you should classify that as a kidnapping as well. But anyway, <laughs> enough with that. I'll get into self, us, a video on self-defense law. If you guys want to see me, or just self-defense, if you guys want to see me do a video on some pretty basic self-defense stuff, kind of open your eyes to some things and maybe you'll have some things to think about, let me know in the comments below and I'll do a video on self-defense. Uh, so, basically when you're in your car, uh, we'll talk about right-handed versus left-handed. I am a left-handed shooter, as uh, a lot of you guys probably know because of the fact of this. Um, I am right-handed. If I were to write on a piece of paper right now, I'm right-handed. If I were to uh, cut something with a knife, like open a box, I'm right-handed. <laughs> but I bowl left-handed and I uh, shoot left-handed, and I've been shooting left-handed ever since I was a very, very young child. So that was, that was a good thing. They had me out there um, shooting when I was very young. And I'm left-eye dominant, so you see it works together. Anyway, we'll talk about left versus right. Now, if you're a right-handed guy, right off the bat, I'll tell you, when you're driving and you have your seatbelt on, it's gonna be hard. <laughs> Especially with the way a lot of guys carry their holster a little bit toward the back. It's going to be hard to access that gun on your side. There's just no two ways about it. And most people don't think about this. But there could come a time where you have to draw that gun while you're in your vehicle. Most people get in their vehicle and they feel this... Um, I wouldn't call it false because there is a safety behind a 2,000 pound vehicle. Or even a vehicle that weighs much more like this Yukon I'm in. So there is a level of safety inside of a vehicle versus being out on foot. But there are several carjackings that go on daily, yearly, you know, depending on where you are and running into the wrong person at the wrong time. So it, it's, it's, it's a thing that, you know, you should have to think about. So you don't want to just get in your car and pay no thought to how you could get your gun out because you never know. So what are some things you can do as a right-handed guy that's going to have a very hard time accessing your firearm when you get in the car? Uh, basically get in your car, latch a seatbelt, and try to get your gun just to see how fast you can get it. And if you fumble with it under a calm environment with nothing going on, imagine how hard it would be to get your gun if you add stress and all this extreme anxiety or, you know, whatever, adrenaline, I should say, into the mix. It's going to be so much more difficult to get to that gun. Uh, 
Um, there are a couple things that you can do. Actually, there's more than a couple things, but we'll talk about a couple. An ankle holster is awesome in the car. An ankle holster is one of the quickest ways to get to a gun while you're in a vehicle. If I had to go for an ankle holster right now, I'm on it. Right here. I'm on it. Okay? One arm can be pulling up the pant leg a little bit, and the other arm can be grabbing that gun. It's the ideal situation for an ankle holster. So, that is why some guys carry a backup gun on their ankle. Not just because they think they're going to run out of ammo on their main side arm and have to transition to something else, but for the fact of when you're in a vehicle, now that your main side arm is covered up by the seat belt and maybe a little bit of the seat is covering it, you have another option to get to a gun. There's two things that's good with this. You're already bent halfway over toward the gun. And number two is 9.9 .9 times out of 10, you're going to be probably ducking or hunching anyway. So you see it all comes together uh, and makes sense when you think about carrying a fire on the ankle. If somebody is trying to punch your window or bust your window with something so they can carjack you, you're probably, the natural instinct is going to be to uh, try to protect yourself from all that shattering glass that's going to be coming near your eyes. So you might be going like this anyway. Well, your gun's right there. Uh, another thing you could do which really wouldn't work for a left-handed guy is a shoulder holster. But I have one right here. <laughs> Sorry, right here. Now, this shoulder holster is not adjusted for me right. I didn't have time to do it, and I was just trying to get out of the house. But um, since I lost all the weight, I need to lift the gun up on the adjustments, and I have not did that yet. But basically, here's a shoulder holster, and you can put this on the other side of the seat belt. There's the Glock 19, and on the other side is an extra magazine over there. Now, I have this on the other side of the seat belt, so the seat belt isn't hindering me where it latches over here. But, uh, guys, I've always said um, I'm not fond of shoulder holsters, and I'm not trying to uh, put anyone down that wears one. And if you train with a shoulder holster and carry it, then I think you're good to go. If you train from a shoulder holster that you're going to carry in, wear, then I think you're good to go. But a shoulder holster can be a little bit difficult in a real world scenario uh, to get to the gun sometimes. Just, just, that's my opinion for me. So I have the shoulder holster right here and the gun is up above my legs. So yeah, if, it, if this gun were adjusted right where it should be up here, I could access it pretty easily. Another thing is, I'm not going to be able to show you this on camera, but is sticking a gun, even if it's in a holster, right between the seat and the console, works very well. And you can push it down to where the to where the only thing that's sticking up alongside the console is the grip, and then your leg is in front of the grip of the gun, and the console's blocking the other side of the grip. So it's not going to be in plain view of anyone outside the car unless they really knew what they were looking for, but that even then it's going to be hard to see it with your leg there. So, like, just keeping, like, an, an Uncle Mike's cheap holster in between the console and the seat and having the grip of the gun exposed is going to, uh, especially for right-handed shooters, because your right hand's right here, and you can be right on that gun even while you drive. You can put a piece of Velcro on the console and put the other side of the Velcro on the seat, attach it some way over there, or no, I mean, I'm sorry. You can put the, a piece of the Velcro on the console and another piece of the Velcro on the holster. Now when you, when you pull the seat and snug your holster in there, firm it up against that Velcro so it attaches. And now you're going to be able to always rip that gun out of there without the holster ever moving. Uh, there's a couple of neat things that are made you can look up out there. There's something that attaches to your dash to the right of the steering wheel that you can reach in like this go for it, and even for left-handed guys, they have it, or guys that shoot left-handed, 
you just reach forward and grab that gun but that gun could be a little more visible from the exterior of the car so never leave it in there of course but while you're driving that's going to be okay uh, just watch you know when you get stopped by the police of course <laughs> because you don't want to end up with the barrel of a gun in your face and police officer be being very nervous and cautious so that's a couple of ideas of what you could do um, you know small of the back no way <laughs> small of the back is probably the worst thing you could do when it comes to carrying in a car um, on a shoulder holster for a right-handed guy it would be right here you know you have a coat on it's winter to unzip your jacket when you get in the car not a bad scenario at all for that uh, in fact if somebody was at your driver's side window trying to accost you or carjack you the gun would come out and you know the muzzle would already be real easy to get in their direction uh, on the other side you'd have to extend your arm so you got shoulder holster, ankle holster, in beside the console, and some things like that that I talked about. Now, where is the worst places to keep a gun in the car, even though it's legal? In the glove box. Okay, you... Whoa, hard break here, guys. Um, you keep a gun in your glove box, and somebody comes up and attempts to smash your window in to get to you and you are trying in your nervous haste to get into the glove box to get that gun if you don't get that gun and that guy gets in your car now this guy is going to be in your front seat with a gun a foot in front of him I mean I understand there's a lot of people out there that aren't gun people like us my viewers that are watching this video and to them a gun is like oh it's just self-defense you know no big deal I keep a gun for self-defense they're not a gun person they don't collect guns they don't video guns so what do a lot of these people do they feel that their car is too much of a safe haven while they're in it so they drop the gun in the glove box and think well if anything ever happens you know it's there there's ever an emergency I got the gun in the glove box but you just got to think about some scenarios going down and you getting to that gun in time um, a gun in the center console like in the Yukon that's okay but still still not ideal because you have to open the latch you have to push the latch open the lid reach in and get to that gun so you got a couple steps to do before you get to the gun you know, if you were walking on the sidewalk, would you want to have to take two extra steps before you reach your gun? Or do you have it to where you just brush your shirt back with your arm and draw the gun in one stroke? See, that's the way you should think about things when you're in your car. You might want it just as easy when you're in your car to reach that firearm as when you're on the street. Now, I am guilty of driving in a vehicle without having a gun that is right at the ready. So, don't feel bad if you if you do things that way because I'm not uh, I'm not trying to uh, say that you're, you know, you're totally wrong or you're completely wrong or anything like that because um, I there's a lot of times I find myself in a vehicle where I don't have a gun right ready at hand. But just keep that in mind. You wouldn't, if you were on the sidewalk walking through your town, and you can you can seal carry. Would you want to have to reach over two feet, open a door, pull a holster out, then remove the gun from the holster? Would you feel safe if you were on the street and you had to do these things? You probably wouldn't. It's just too much involved. Too many steps. Well, that's what you're dealing with in your car. I'm just trying to get that thought across to you. And another thing is, never ever, if a police officer stops you, never ever open that dash with a gun in there before you let him know what's going on. Because I'm going to tell you what, buddy, that 
that little casual stop is going to turn is going to turn very quickly. He don't know who you are. He don't know if you just robbed a bank. He don't know if you're a felon, if you just escaped from prison, and you're going to do anything you can, including shooting him to get out of the situation. Don't let that don't let that dash uh, door pop down with a gun in there in front of that cop. If you go to reach for your registration, you better tell him first. I'm just giving you guys tips here. You will have a gun in your face very quickly. You guys got to understand. Police don't know. Don't know who you are, what your situation is. They got to think of the worst case scenario first and foremost. Okay, so it's just some pointers, guys, to keep in mind. Um, the audio will improve on this camera. I apologize for the audio. I just really enjoy doing these videos, talking while I'm driving somewhere, because um, it's, it's a quiet place in the car, a place I can think a lot while I'm talking, and it very much helps me to think and get my point out there. I, haven't, I have a skeleton case coming for this GoPro, and I have an external microphone, and it's going to improve the audio quality 100%, just like if I were on my um, Canon camcorder. You're going to hear me uh, like a stereo sound. There will be no plastic around the microphone like this GoPro is. Uh, I think they said six, two to six days for the case, and then I've got to wait on the microphone and the extension for the microphone, the adapter, so it works. So, all right, guys, there you go. Sorry about the long video, and I will talk to you guys real soon. This is H4T. And I hope everybody has a great day.